Moving on from that, I want to quickly touch upon this video that's been going viral over the last couple of days it feels like because Kanye popped out of nowhere and decided to press the button that he does all the time in terms of outraging people he was accosted by some paparazzi maybe out on date night I'm not too sure what he was doing but he gave a little two minute interview where he essentially said no one can control him and I thought it was pretty interesting because we haven't heard anything from Kanye in a while but since all the backlash with Kyrie's been going on he's probably been watching it um you know from afar and seeing how quickly people change their tune in terms terms of how Kyrie one week was being anti-semitic and then suddenly the next week um the punishment didn't fit the crime and then people may be saying Kanye had a point so it was kind of high time that he kind of came out of hiding and decided to speak and let people know that he can't be controlled that these eyes are not for controlling that he's still on smoke and that it's up it's scary they can't control you they can't they, they, they try to suppress you but that's how they try to categorize they you. can't control me you get what I'm saying? They could control Shaq. They could control Charles Barkley. They could control LeBron James. Look how he's looking. Look how sassy Kanye's looking. He's giving the paparazzi or he's giving us the look that young Miami probably gave Diddy when he was giving all those other girls presents and not paying her much attention. <laughs> right? Look at him. They could control Jay-Z and Beyonce. No, not you, man. But they can't control me. Not you see, you. it ain't no name I won't name. Exactly. And big up that paparazzi as well, egging him on, knowing how to press his button, knowing how to goad him into a reaction. Good job. It's up. No, you. You know what I'm saying? And just for Minister Farrakhan, I love you, but the way you read that, I took that as a slight. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I'm taking no disrespect from nobody, so let's get on the phone and let's talk that out. I don't care who you are. Ooh. I ain't taking no slights from nobody, right? I ain't taking no slights from nobody. It's God. That's the only person that I serve. My mom ain't here. My mama was sacrificed. Me too. Huh? You understand? Yeah. Appreciate you. Michael Jordan. What about him? His daddy, right? Bill Cosby, <laughs> his son, <laughs> right? Dr. Dre, his son. You know, out in Hollywood, a lot of people come up missing. Feels like it might be a lot of that in order to control, traumatize. They want to monetize and traumatize. And God loved me. You understand? They, they hit me. Gap, Adidas, all that away. Still, Forbes, who hate me, right? Had to write net worth 400 million. Jesus is king. God loved me. That's more important than thinking of life. That's the thing. You know what I'm saying? It's, and this truth is going to be heard. Y'all can't send none of y'all meat mills, y'all puffies, y'all little boozy, none of these names, none of these people that have to listen to y'all because they're dealing with, they have legal, I never killed nobody, right? I'm the pussy that never killed nobody, right? But that means I can say whatever I want. Yo, that's wild. Him kind of suggesting in a roundabout way that all those guys that he mentions only say the things that they say about him and criticize him and push back at the stuff that he says or maybe fall in line and you know be a company man i don't know if they've been company men too but regardless the thing the people he feels like are being coons or being controlled they're only being controlled because they have crimes that they've committed that they don't want people to know about essentially they might have murdered people like what are you talking about but all of that is mute in it because clearly my man's just saying anything just to get a reaction but but the fact remains we still haven't heard from the guy as to why he wasn't invited to Virgil Abloh's private funeral R.I.P. to the great why he wasn't allowed to speak at Virgil Abloh's public funeral R.I.P. to the great we still haven't heard that and that's one of the things I think was the great kind of silver lining and golden nugget to come from this whole drama was I think the realization on mass I've, I've already realized it because I'm an adult but I think for some people who are still maybe a bit naive it was good to maybe realize and kind of have the wall kind of pulled off from your eyes in terms of realizing that Kanye is just a dude it's going through whatever he's going through whether it's mental health whether it's trauma who knows whether it's just him being who he is well, I don't know I'm not gonna sit here and kind of pretend to know 
what's going on in his head or how he's suffering or not suffering but one thing that's been proven one thing that's been revealed during this time is that the guy is fallible right the guy is definitely a flawed human he definitely has his errors he definitely has his mistakes and he's just like you and i there's nothing that separates him between us in terms of maybe a couple of millions or whatnot right that's all it is but in general he is basically like you and i and he has his faults and i guess that's been a great thing to kind of witness in real time the altar or the pulpit that he stood on at one point suddenly coming crumbling down around him and him trying to cope and make it make sense so you have to big up tremaine emery for basically exposing that and highlighting the fact that you know it wasn't all it wasn't all roses he wasn't always cop virgil's guy he wasn't always supporting his friends he was talking bad about about people behind their backs and just being a horrible horrible colleague a horrible mentor horrible friend even on flipping virgil abloh's deathbed and we still haven't heard from kanye till this day as to why he wasn't exactly allowed to speak the public one which is brutal because a private one was with actual close friends which we had no idea even went on that's why it was bloody private and the public one was the one that took place in that museum i'm pretty sure where there was that clip that went viral that people were flipping sharing which was horrible of, of tyler crying and giving a speech at the museum in virgil's honor and whatnot but he wasn't allowed to speak at that either so we don't know but obviously we can read between the lines and clearly they weren't on good terms to the point where even his family didn't want him to speak there even after his death because usually people kind of mend and sort of let bygones be got bygones after death because you know you quickly realize that you know, stuff is never that serious and if you were well, there was a real bond there then it's better to kind of spend the time that you have on this planet being cool and making things right but even on that guy's deathbed they still weren't happy to have him take any kind of meaningful part in the funeral whatsoever which clearly i think is a sign that the guy is you know he's not the guy that we kind of all fell in love with back in the day it just is what it is we have to kind of accept or move on from what he is now at the moment that's basically it where we're at but i think a lot of people are still struggling with coming to grips with that sort of stuff because i think they still have this image of kanye being the guy that they kind of fell in love with back in the day but that guy has gone that guy is dead that guy is finished it's over